New Yorkers throw away an average of $38,000 a year on rent alone. So why don't most of us own our own homes here? Because I simply cannot afford it. Thank you. I didn't even know you can own an apartment. Because it is way too expensive and I'm not really willing to let go of that much money at once. Because the one I want to buy, I, I can't afford yet. I also agree. I definitely can't afford a place here in the city and that's because I'm not a millionaire. However, one in every 21 New Yorkers are, so it shouldn't be a problem for them, right? According to data, 67% of New Yorkers rent their apartments. Compare this to the rest of the country where only 36% of the population rents and you get a stark contrast. So why is that? Well, let's start with the data. New York City is the biggest city in the US. In fact, one in every 37 US residents live within its 302 square miles. The average rent in Manhattan for a one bedroom apartment is 3,200, which is about 82% of the median American salary. In fact, more New Yorkers pay rent than the number of people who live in the city of Los Angeles. So why don't we own our apartments? Wouldn't that make more sense than throwing away an average of $38,000 per year on rent? To get to the bottom of this question, I met with real estate agent Philip Salem to understand what qualifications you need to buy a home here. So I'm here with my friend Philip Salem. Hello. Hello. So, so good to see you. Yes, so good to see you again. He helped me find my beautiful apartment here in New York. So he's a real estate agent, he can hook you up. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the reality of buying a place in New York City. What's the average cost of buying a one bedroom in Manhattan? And what's the average cost of buying a two bedroom in Manhattan? So Manhattan, as we know, is a large island. Yeah. Each neighborhood and each, you know, each neighborhood has such specific price points to it. Right. An average one bedroom apartment, we're saying at least minimum $1 million for a one bedroom apartment. And that's a condo. Condos, you actually own the property. That only makes up about 20% of the New York real estate market. The rest of the apartments are co-ops. Okay, so you so don't actually own it? Co-ops, you, you own shares of the building. One bedroom is a, on average a million dollars. About a million dollars. And a two bedroom, you're looking at at least 1.5 to $2 million. We're gonna do a hypothetical of if you wanna buy a one bedroom co-op, since that's the most common purchase. Yes. An average mortgage and maintenance, which is an HOA fee basically, yeah. um, for, a, for a $1 million apartment in a co-op, you're looking at, a, at about 5,000, 5,500 a month. Yes. What is the down payment you would need to put on that? Of course. So if we're looking at a condo, one bedroom, you're looking at 10% down payment, okay? Oh. So 10% down payment, so you need 100,000. Okay. That's a condo. Okay. However, the majority of New York apartments are co-ops. They require 20% down. There are a lot of fees associated with that. <laughs> yes. I knew it. <laughs> so if you're looking at a co-op, they typically require at least two years worth of your mortgage and your maintenance in post-closing liquidity. So not just in addition to the 20% that you put down, uh -huh. they need to make sure that you have at least 20% post-closing liquidity in the bank in cash. This is exactly why Louie and I didn't buy our apartment. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's one of the most complex places in the world yes. to buy an apartment. Everyone wants to live here. Each apartment has, its, has so many variables to it. So, View, so. light, space, neighborhood, street, our are, are you across from a parking garage? Are you in front of a river? Are you in front of a park? Yes. So all of these little things make the price of the apartment either so much more or so much less. Yeah. Uh, what are the other fees? Let's talk about a co-op since that's of the most course. common. So let's talk about co-op. So you have a flip tax. So when you buy into a building, you have to, you have to pay the building a flip tax, which okay. is typically one to three percent of the purchase price of the apartment. So if you're looking at a, at a $1 million, which is a $10,000, payment to the building, which goes into the building's reserves. Then there's also a mansion tax. A mansion tax? A mansion tax is anything that's over $1 million in New York, and that tax ranges from 1% to 3.5%. So you could say you live in a mansion if you own a one-bedroom apartment in New York? I've seen studios for $4 million, and you live in a mansion in New York City, in, okay, in, in, New York City okay. in a $4 million apartment. <laughs> it's a mansion, and you have to pay a mansion tax. <laughs> at $4 million, you're looking at 3.5%. 
so that goes into the city. Oh. You also need to pay a transfer tax, which is a city and state transfer tax to New York City, which ranges from 1.875% to 2.025% in tax. Are you done with the fees? Is that it? Or are there more fees? It depends. If there's a there's a co-op application, they typically have co-op application fees, okay. which range anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000. That includes a credit check, a move-in fee, move-in deposit, background check, and additional miscellaneous uh, processing fees for the co-op. So I always say, you know, if you're buying a $1 million apartment yeah. in New York City, you need to have the post-closing liquidity for two years. Okay. You need to have enough money to pay the transfer tax. You need to have enough money to pay the flip tax. You need enough money to pay the mansion tax. So and then any co-op fees that are involved okay. or, or condo fees involved. An attorney fee, for oh. about $3,500. Okay. But you know, one thing that is free is using a buyer's agent. There is no fee. Like you, right? There's no fee when you're using a buyer's oh. agent with, with uh, helping you find an apartment in your. Oh. I'm so glad I met you because I had no idea that was true. Yeah. And that's why I never used agents. Yes. Yeah. Because I thought that they were going to try to take more money from the cost of already renting. Yeah. But, yeah. uh,. That's amazing. Yeah. So the total amount you would need to show in your account, including post-closing liquidity, all fees, mm -hmm. the uh, down payment, all Mansion taxes. Tax, flip tax, attorney fee, co-op fees. That's a rough estimate. Again, yeah. every apartment is its own city. Every apartment's gonna, you know, have different. Yeah. And that's for a one bedroom. For a one bedroom. And most people, like at least for Louie and I, we wanted a two bedroom, so it's only Probably it goes up. double, yes. is my guess. I have no idea. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. That was very insightful, I have to say. So where can people find you? You can find me at philipsalem at compass.com. And um, you can click on his email linked in the video description. So there you have it. To buy an average one bedroom apartment in Manhattan, you would need an estimated $377,250 just to qualify for it. If you want to learn more about the apartment buying process, watch the bonus interview with Philip at the end of this video. After talking with Philip, I wanted to look on the Compass website to see how much it would cost to buy certain units. So I'm using Vidyard to record this. They're a free software that allows you to uh, record your screen and you can do cool things like draw on the screen. See, you can have my, my face down here. And so thank you Vidyard for sponsoring this video and making it super easy for me to show you all of this. So let's start with this unit. This is a two bedroom, two bath. This is in the West Village. The price is 2.5 million, almost 2.6 million. And uh, you can see it's 1300 square feet. So I created a calculator right here in Excel, which I'll share in this video description. And you can see I input the, the apartment cost here. And then this automatically calculates out all of these costs once I put in the apartment costs and the monthly mortgage. And what we get here is uh, the total cash you would need to purchase this two bedroom, two bath is right here. It is $984,000. This one is much cheaper. This is in Harlem. I'm gonna draw on screen again. One of the cool things about Vidyard is that I can actually change the color of the pen. Um, it just makes it way easier to show, to keep your attention on screen. So this one's 295,000, 295,000, one bedroom, one bath. It's in Harlem and it's uh, 144th Street. Let's see here. This is a co-op. The maintenance cost alone is $477. I'm not sure how accurate this is because to me, this is almost half the cost, but the thing is, these are all, these are all fees, right? The flip tax, this mansion tax, the transfer tax, the co-op application fee, the attorney fee. So just in the fees alone, you're spending $25,000. And then this is the closing liquidity. This is what you would need in your bank account. Um, this is what you would need to put in a down payment. So when you calculate that, you need $95,000 just for, <laughs> for the actual apartment cost. And that's why we get that $120,000 fee. Again, these are all estimates based off of uh, what my, what Philip told me. So it may not be 100% accurate, but it does give you an idea 
of how much this really costs. Let's look at another unit. So this one is gorgeous. Uh, this one is in Chelsea and it is 5.8. Two bedroom, two bath, and a half bath, so that's nice. It is quite large. It's 2,300 square feet. Then we have these, look at this taxes. Look at that, monthly taxes, 4,800. Common charges, 4,800 per month. Let's see what it looks like though. That bathroom is very nice. Oh my goodness, stunning. It looks like it has a really nice view, very nicely decorated, very spacious. I love the high ceilings. Oh, you do have your own parking spot. Your sky high parking, that explains the price of that one. Oh wow, I actually know this building. There's some celebrities that live in this building. I don't know them personally, but that would be pretty cool, right? So this is a layout of it. All right, let's put in the prices. So we have, wow. So the total cash you would need on hand to buy this apartment would be 2.3 million. So that kind of gives you an idea of why it's so expensive. <laughs> to buy here. Of course, most people aren't looking at something like this. I think if someone's buying, maybe it's something more realistic like this, but uh, it, it's pricey. It's very pricey. So that's a little breakdown of how much it costs to purchase something in New York. <laughs> Although New York City is one of the most expensive places on the planet, I can't imagine living anywhere else, even in a pandemic. It's energy, glamour, and the people draw me back, and no matter how many places I travel to, I'll always call New York home. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out the rest of my apartment series where I show you what it takes to get a beautiful apartment here in New York. Plus, you're gonna get a tour of my dream apartment. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. So what's the process of buying an apartment in the city? Just briefly kind of summarize. Let me try to summarize it in 20 seconds. Okay. So find an agent. Okay. Use a buyer's agent to help you through the entire process. Okay. They help you find properties that are listed publicly as well as privately. Agents have a lot of access to apartments that are not listed publicly. Okay. Then we curate a collection for you okay. that you can pick and choose online shopping which might fit your needs. Okay. Then we narrow down that collection to your top favorites. Okay. So most of my clients narrow down to three to five that match all their criteria. Then we go on a tour, we see those, mm -hmm. and then we submit an offer. That offer process typically takes about two to three days of back and forth with the seller. Gotcha. And then once you have that, you're in contract. So you have to hire a real estate attorney, which is one of the fees involved. Yeah. You hire an attorney, they draw up the contract, they do their due diligence to make sure that the building is, in a, is a building to buy in. Once they say that that's good, you sign the contract, you hand over your deposit, whether a condo 10%, co-op 20%. Then we have to do the appraisal and all the bank if you are mortgaging the, uh, the apartment. The bank comes in, they appraise the apartment, they give you a commitment letter. The commitment letter is then issued to you once you are approved by the bank and then we're clear to close. In that process, you do have to fill out a co-op application, right. which is typically very invasive on your privacy. Bank statements, tax returns, letter of appointment, reference oh letters. So kind of like what you have to do when you rent an apartment. Exactly, but much yeah. more invasive. Okay. So, wow. yeah, so that's what the condo or co op, you do have to split that fee. Once everything is cleared, your bank approved, your co op approved, you're at the closing table, you then hand you over all your money, in. you get your keys, and you move into your beautiful mansion. Your one beautiful mansion, because it's most likely that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Which area in Manhattan is the most expensive? West Village. Which area is the least expensive? Ooh, that's a tough question, but typically more uptown you go, okay. the prices, the, the apartments get larger and the prices get small. So that sounds like a good place to invest in. A good place to invest in. I've seen a lot of great deals in South Harlem. I've seen a lot of great deals in Washington Heights. Okay. Um, you know, but the same $1 million in Washington Heights can get you a three bedroom compared to a $1 million in the West Village, which might get you a studio. So where would you buy a place if you lived in the city? So I currently live in West Chelsea okay. and I love West Chelsea. It's one of the most 
developing neighborhoods right now in the city because you're sandwiched between Hudson Yards mm -hmm. and the West Village. Yeah. So you're not paying West Village prices. Mm -hmm. You're paying less price per square foot and there's so much happening around you and there's so much development happening. So you're getting great deals in new devs and you're getting great deals in resales. Oh. Yeah. That's a really good insider tip. Yeah. I would have never thought to look in Chelsea because I just assume it's expensive. West Chelsea. West Chelsea. So you're not <laughs> in the, the prime. Hudson River. So you're more near the Hudson River. Yeah. Which typically is less desirable because you're further away from the middle of the subway city. And, stuff. and you're further away from the subway. Yeah. So you get better deals as you go more west or more east of the island. But the city's always developing and they'll probably eventually have some type of subway line there. And it does like, what's the big deal with walking occasionally? Walk. You know? Walk. Yeah, you know, it's like exactly. part of living in New York.